But for our control, our, to control our robot over there, we have a total of five motors, one in the base to rotate, one at the first pivot, one centers an elbow, one move the gripper, and then the gripper motor itself. So we need a whole bunch of parts. And for my testing of those motors using a power supply, I see that they typically draw two to 300 milliamps at a time. Um, the stall current is around six or seven. So we don't need these big um, discrete components. What we'll go with is a Texas Instrument SN754410. It's an integrated circuit. There's three of them in this little tube here. Um, that has, that it's a quadruple half H driver. What is a quadruple half H driver? Let me write that. Well, a half H driver is essentially this. Okay? It's one half of that H driver circuit. So it's a quad half H driver, so you have a total of four halves, or you essentially have two complete H driver um, circuits on this little chip. And this little chip will uh, run up to about an amp, which is more than enough for our, our robots. Now you can see I have redrawn my circuit diagram for the H driver a little bit differently. Previously, we had essentially individual switches in all four corners here. What I've done is replace those with a switch that can go down or up or be not connected at all. So it's a, like a single pole uh, double throw with, with an intermediate off switch. Um, so that solves a couple problems actually, the one big problem. We can't, we now can no longer connect this leg and this leg together at the same time shorting it out. Yeah, so you either pick that one or this one. And the other reason for drawing it that way is that's essentially the way this chip that we're going to use, the Texas Instrument SN754410 quad half H driver. Uh, that's essentially the way that chip works. So we'll talk about that. Uh, let's go through the pinout of the chip. Pin one is the enable for um, outputs one and two. Remember we said the quad half H driver. Each half is four corner, four quads. Each half of the chip is a full H driver. Um, each half H driver is that much. So essentially this 1A output is this switch which can send the motor, connect the motor to either to ground or to power or no connection at all. And this output 2A we can use on the other side of the motor to connect that to power, ground, or nothing. So to use this, if we connect one of them, one output to power, and the other output to ground, it runs one way. If we reverse the connections, pull this to ground, and set this to power, then it rotates the motor in the other direction. And one thing I failed to talk about when we talked about this before. What happens if you do something like this? Connect both sides of the motor to ground or both sides of the motor to power. Well, we talked about when the motor was spinning, it creates this back EMF. Okay. Now, if I could connect both sides of the motor to ground, as it's drawn here with uh, which would correspond to both these outputs being low. My back EMF flows around and in a loop through the motor and essentially it gets dissipated in the motor windings. So this works something like a brake. It takes the current and dissipates it into heat in the windings and slows the motor down. So by connecting them both to ground or both to power, we create a brake for the motor if we leave them both in the no connection state, essentially the motor will post. So how do we hook this up? Over here I have my microcontroller. Over here is my chip. 
and we're going to pin out this one, two, enable pin enables this half of the H driver chip. So it essentially enables two outputs, in this case output 1A and output 2A. So we could say we would connect this one to 1A, this to 2A. Okay. Oh, that's wrong. I'm getting my A's and this is 1Y into Y. Y is the output that goes to the motor. A is the input that goes to the microcontroller. So if 1A goes to one side of the motor, I did it again, didn't I? 1Y goes to one side of the motor and 2Y goes to the other side of the motor. I now have this much of the H bridge connected. 1A can go to my microcontroller and I'll put a resistor in here for a minute and we'll call so that controls in the forward direction 2A goes to the microcontroller the reverse direction and this enable here goes to the third thing here and we'll say these do this because there's something on the order of 10 K okay um, so now by switching the enables in this, I can control how that motor runs. The reason for these 10K resistors is in the event something goes bad here and something gets shorted out or something gets disconnected, I don't damage my microcontroller. So let's talk about how this much of the circuit works. If I have my cable here, this is enabled. This is forward, this is reverse, and this is my 1A and 1A, 1Y, and 2Y, A on frame. So if enabled is 1, my forward connection is 0. My reverse connection is zero or low, okay, logically low. Um, both of these are going to be low. And it's going to be just like I have drawn here, and the motor will be in a braking mode. If I make the enable zero and everything is low, essentially this is the disabled state, and that's essentially the no connection state of the switch. Uh, it sends the outputs of the chip into a high impedance mode or you'll often hear the phrase tri-state. Basically it means that it's neither supplying nor sinking current. And if enable is one, forward is one, reverse is zero, I will turn one Y on and two Y is zero. So what I will do there is one Y goes to power, two Y goes to ground, and the motor rotates in the forward direction. Conversely, if enable is one, forward is zero, reverse is one, one Y goes to ground, and two Y goes to power, one Y goes to ground, two Y goes to power, and now I reverse the direction for the rotation. Okay? And the other combination is, of course, um, well, uh, enable one, 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 then both of the outputs go to one, which is another way of doing braking, just on the other half of the circuit. And then there's a whole series of combinations with enable zero, but all of those result in this um, tri-state condition. So if enable zero, I'll put a um, no, here. Whatever the forward reverse output is zero. If the enable is zero, these outputs are tri-stated or at a high impedance. Okay? So to control my motor, I just turn on the enable and set the forward and reverse bits as necessary in my control software and 
I can set them both to zero for braking, or I can turn the navel off and let the motor coast. And other connections on the chip, we have grounds here and here. Um, it serves both as a ground and a heat sink into the ground plane. Now, we said this chip will deliver, will control about an amp. To get a full amp out of it, you need to put a heat sink on the chip um, to really get rid of the heat. But for, for these motors that only um, run a few hundred milliamps, I think we can get away without the heat sink. We have um, our motor power supply, VCC2. It can be anywhere from 5 to 36 volts. In the case of our little blue robot arms, it's that it'll connect to that unregulated power supply, which runs around 12 to 14 volts. Um, we have VCC1 here, which is the 5 volt logical supply of the chip. That can be the same 5 volt supply as a microcontroller. And we have the grounds, which are the same grounds. And then the other 4A, 4Y, 3A, 3Y, and 3, 4 enable, essentially another whole uh, H bridge driver set. So we use one side for one motor, another side for another motor. We still have the issues of controlling the speed of the motor and a couple little hookup issues. So to control the speed, we know we want to use a duty cycle. Which of these three outputs or sets of outputs do we want to perform the duty cycle on? Do we get this to work properly? Well, if we're in forward mode, we have enable set to one, the forward is one, and the reverse is zero. So we have essentially the switches set like this. Okay? Now I could do a duty cycle on this forward input and switch it from here to here, okay? as I go switching it back and forth, you know, from there to there. Um, and essentially I'm switching back and forth between this state and this state, and uh, switching between forward and braking. Probably not the best thing, because when you go into the engine braking or motor braking, you're, you're wasting energy. You really want to go into this coast, right? So what we can do, since we want to toggle between forward and coast. We toggle the enable line between 0 and 1. And we can leave this there, we can leave this in forward, we leave this in reverse. And when the enable goes low, instead of being connected this way, we essentially go into the tri-state or high impedance mode and disconnect the motor and let it coast. So we go forward, coast, forward, coast, forward, coast. So it's pretty clear for the efficient operation, we want to put the pulse width modulation on our enable signal here. So the enable gets the PWM. And we use the forward and reverse lines simply to control the direction or to trigger the braking. And one last thing, if you recall, on the discrete circuit, we had some pull-up and pull-down resistors to make sure that when it's off, it's off. If, if there's, if your microcontroller is still booting up, or in the case of this robot, where we're hooking it up to potentially multiple things, in lab view or another microcontroller, if things aren't plugged in, we want to make sure that off is off. So to do that, well, to make sure off is off, we need to have, make sure that this enable line is pulled down. So as, as long as enable is pulled down, these switches go into the tri-state or high impedance mode, the motor doesn't run. So if we had a 10K resistor here in our uh, circuit to go back to the microcontroller so we don't damage the microcontroller in case smoke escapes from this, we need to pull down with, at this point with um, something larger, let's say 100K to ground, okay? That way, if there's no connection here, this port is always pulled down to ground through the 100K and through the 10K, and we get the motor turned off. That way, off will be off. 